There's a passage in the Dhammapada where the Buddha says that there is no happiness other than peace. Nati santi barang sukang. Now, all too often we hear that translated as there is no happiness higher than peace. Which sounds fairly normal. But when the Buddha says there's no happiness other than peace, he's saying something pretty radical. The pleasures we find in life, many of them are not peaceful, but the fact that the mind can settle on something for a while and not feel forced and be content to stay there, that's where the happiness lies. You look at a job well done. You can keep looking and looking and looking, and when it's well done, you look around and there's nothing pushing away from looking at the job, and you're happy to be there. This can be our own work, the work of other people. Of course, if you're staying with something and you don't like being there, you're feeling forced there, okay, there's going to be a struggle, and then of course there's no, no real peace there. So it's stillness without struggle. That's where the happiness lies. Because happiness goes together with stillness, then this is one of the reasons why there is that factor of the noble path of right concentration. It includes a sense of well-being, happiness, pleasure, ease, well-being. Because if you're going to see anything, the mind has to be still. And together with the stillness, there's a sense of well-being. That's how you know you're properly focused in the present moment, if there's a sense of well-being here. But this is also what concentration is not the goal, because there is a certain amount of effort that has to go into keeping the mind concentrated. And it's, it's an acquired taste. Some people sit here and they're miserable for a whole hour. But what we're learning is how to be here happily, how to create a sense of well-being here. so that we can see clearly what's going on in the mind and figure out where the disturbances are and what's causing them. And the more thoroughly you can be here with a sense of well-being, the more refined disturbances you can see. And it's those subtle ones that build up, that lie at the root of some of the really big disturbances in the mind. So you want to be able to settle down here with a sense of being well established. You're not going to be pushed off in any direction by anything. This requires an enlarged state of mind. Again, that's what we're trying to develop here. Once the, the breath starts feeling comfortable, you start thinking of spreading your awareness around and allowing that sense of comfortable breath to spread through the body as well. The broader your awareness, the more stable it is. If you're just precariously balanced on one little spot. It's so easy to get tipped over. So think of this as a large foundation, that the foundation of your mind is spreading out larger even than your body. You're firmly grounded here on the floor. And John Fuang used to talk about how much he liked sitting out on the ground. He said he felt his rear end felt rooted deep down in the ground. A sense of real security, a sense of real stability. So think of your awareness going deep down into the earth, spreading out in all directions, so that nothing can tip it over. And the peace and the happiness will come together. And you want to learn how to stay here. Again, there's a part of the mind that says, okay, enough of that, what's next? And you have to learn how to dissociate yourself from that. See that as a disturbance. Because the mind is used to getting its pleasure out of moving around. It stays here for a little while, and then, okay, enough of that, because things are beginning to change, and you get up and move off someplace else. Then you begin to take that for granted, that the mind's got to move in order to have some pleasure. Things have to change. 
again, things have to change in a very, very particular way for the mind to be content with the change. And all too often, the change doesn't go that way. And the reason we like some changes is because the mind feels unobstructed as it goes from one thing to the next. The philosopher wants to find happiness as the free play of your faculties. People talk about being in the zone. Things go effortlessly. It's not that there's no effort, the effort's there, but it's not being blocked by anything. Everything is smoothly coordinated and there's no sense that your body's not doing what you don't want it to do. It's that sense of not being obstructed that gives you the pleasure in moving around that way. But there's a greater peace in learning how to stay here and not being obstructed. Finding something you really can stay with for hours at a time. So you have to learn how to dissociate from any thoughts of boredom, thoughts of impatience. You've got to learn how to be here, not just because it's a really pleasant place to stay, but because the more pleasure you have, the more stillness. The two go together. And the more stillness and the more clearly you can see the little movements of the mind. So this is why the Buddha's strategy is a strategy of pleasure, learning how to use pleasure for a really good end. You follow his instructions on how to f pursue genuine happiness, you end up developing Wisdom, compassion, purity, the same virtues that the Buddha himself developed. Wisdom in realizing that your actions do make a difference in terms of your happiness, and that long-term happiness is better than short. Compassion in realizing that if you want your happiness to last, it can't cause suffering to anybody else. And then purity in that you really do look at your actions and the results. And you make sure that they stay in line with your with your principles. So we're not just for a, a pleasure hit. We're learning how to use happiness for really good purposes. Getting the mind peaceful and happy. So we can see where it's creating any unnecessary stress and learn how to stop. That's not a small goal. Because you look around you at the world, there's so many ways that people look for the happiness that are not peaceful and that are, have no compassion, no wisdom, no purity at all. They create a lot of problems. And when their ideas about how happiness is to be pursued are skewed, then they can take anything. They can even take the Buddha's path. I was told that there's a magazine, one of the big circulation magazines has a cover story on mindfulness this week. And one of the things they talk about is the use of mindfulness in the military. And it tells you a lot about our country that mindfulness goes mainstream when they found a military use for it. It's a sad thing. We want to keep it in line with the Buddha's purpose, which is peace and happiness. Wisdom, purity, compassion, all gathered up together. So learn how to stay here. Work with the breath so that there's a sense of wanting to be here, not because you're forced to be here, but because it's a really good place to stay, and good in many dimensions of the word good. And it feels good, and, it, and it's good for you. 